What is up guys, I'm Rick Kakis, and today we have a deep dive on linear fusion rifles. It was announced yesterday in the most recent TWAB that this gun type was getting a pretty substantial buff within Season 14, and is therefore likely to become a much more significant part of the PvE meta. So what we're doing in this video is testing all of the relevant linear fusion rifles so you guys know which ones to go after which ones to take out your vault, dust off, and level up going into the new season so you can be prepared. And so, let's get started. But just before we do, there's only a couple of days left in the Advanced GG sale. If you use code KHD25, you get 25% off the best and only clinically proven gaming supplement out there. Obviously, I gotta recommend Cacus Kiwi Lime. It's a tropical vacation in your mouth, but I'm gonna let you guys in on a secret. If you get strawberry shortcake energy or birthday cake energy and you mix those with milk, oh my goodness, it is so good. So definitely get on that. It's all linked in the description down below. All right, now let's move on here and talk about these linear fusion rifles. Firstly, let's talk about this buff. So it was revealed yesterday that they would be getting a 15% damage buff to their precision damage specifically. So if you body shot next season, it's going to do the same damage as it's doing right now, but they're also getting a 20% increase to their reserve ammo. And that is actually pretty significant as well. So I took again a bunch of linear fusion rifles and you can see right here we tested them against some things and against each other when facing Kali, the first raid boss of Last Wish. And you can see right here I'm using the threaded needle which we'll talk about in a sec and my teammates using an absolute god roll fallen guillotine and I'm actually able to out damage him. Now that is mainly because Kali has a head multiplier so she inflates precision damage beyond what it usually is but you can kill Kali with swords no problem and this shows you that linear fusions aren't lacking that far behind in damage it's just the fact that they require all precision hits. They're a little bit harder to use, which is why they've fallen behind in the meta. So that 15% damage increase will be a significant increase. In fact, I was told by a clanmate who did the math, the sleeper simulant, when it gets this buff, will actually do more DPS than the xenophage. And that shows you again how significant of an increase this is. Remember, however, the xenophage can't even get precision, so it still has that ease of use factor that linears won't have. So also remember that you're gonna have to hit your shots if you want any part of this damage output. But there are three legendary linear fusion rifles available in the game right now that aren't sunset. The first one we're going over here is the Tarantula. And frankly, you don't want this thing. When we look at its perks, it really has nothing good for DPS output. Like, box breathing is a shell of its former self and you really don't want that. And it has stuff like kill clip and rampage that gives you a damage bonus after the fact. So, against bosses, against champions, this is not the play. Let's move on and talk about something much more interesting and that is the Corsair's Wrath. Now, this was actually introduced with season of the hunt and beyond light and this is still available via hunts but this can interestingly spawn with high impact reserves and that's really all you're going for if you get a roll with high impact reserves that is very good because it is going to significantly increase your damage when you get to that bottom part of the magazine in fact in my tests against Kali, this both times outputted a very consistent around 500,000 damage. So that's a good baseline to judge on some of the other roles and other weapons we're going to see moving forward. But continuing on from there, we have the Threaded Needle. Now, this was introduced just this season, and it's dropping from either Battlegrounds or the Umbral Engram system. So this is a very farmable weapon. I'm sure a lot of you have some decent rolls, hopefully, that you've been hanging on to. If you don't, this is the time to farm, definitely. But this thing can get some very good rolls. You are absolutely going for Vorpal Weapon for increased damage against bosses, and that does count stuff like champions, so that's gonna be quite important. And then, in that first category, 
man, you have a lot of good options. So you have Clown Cartridge, which reloading will increase your magazine size pretty substantially, or you have Rapid Hit, Rapid Precision Hits, Temporarily Increased Stability and Reload Speed. You also have Auto Loading Holster, so you can get your shots off, switch to something else, like maybe the Secession Snipe Rifle, unload that, switch back, and it will be fully reloaded. And we do also have Field Prep for more reserve ammo and also a significantly faster reload as long as you're crouching. Now the role I tested against Kali was Rapid Hit plus Vorpal Weapon, and that did on the lower end 508,000 damage, almost 509 if I missed a couple headshots, and then up to around 532,000 damage. So that is capable of doing significantly more damage than the Corsair's Wrath with high impact reserves. Now before we move on from these legendaries, if you want to get really intense about some of the other perks you want to get, well firstly, you want a charge time masterwork. That is going to let you get your shots off faster and therefore increase your rate of fire. It won't be very much, but it will impact your DPS. Now as for your battery, you could go for something like liquid coils that increases your impact, your damage, but reduces your charge time, or the opposite end, accelerated coils, which decreases your impact, but increases your charge time. Both of those are gonna be messing with your damage. You could also go with anything that increases your magazine size, such as ionized battery or enhanced battery. Those would be good. They just give you straight up more rounds in the magazine, which you don't want is something like projection fuse or particle repeater. Those are going to increase stuff like your range and stability and that has no effect on your damage output. But moving on from there, let's talk about exotic linear fusion rifles. I alluded to these earlier when I mentioned the sleeper simulant, but these will, as you can see by community manager DMG's reply to my tweet asking, they will be affected by this buff. So they will be getting that 15% precision damage increase and more reserves. So firstly, we have the infamous Sleeper Simulant. Now, importantly, the catalyst for this weapon is going to increase your reserves, therefore increasing your sustained damage output. Now, myself and my teammate both had the catalyst and we were both using this thing at the same time to test any discrepancies. But as you can see, the Sleeper chunks Kali. Like, it does a huge amount of damage per shot, but that also means if you miss, it's catastrophic. And as you can see here, Nova hit all his headshots, I miss like one or two, and the upper echelon of what you can do is 550,000 damage, heck, even more, because we didn't really get any bounces, so if we were lining Kali up against the surface and the a laser was bouncing back and hitting her again, it would do even more damage, so this is definitely a very high damaging weapon, but as you can see, by me just missing a couple shots, you really need to be accurate. It's high risk, high reward. But next up, we have the Queen Breaker Linear Fusion, and this has two different sites, Marksman sites and Combat sites, that you can swap between, and depending on which one is on, it's actually gonna affect the damage and the charge time. So firstly, we tested Marksman sites. These are the heavier hitting sites, and as you can see right here, it was significantly less than 500,000 damage. Definitely wasn't that amazing. So after that, we switched to Combat Sights, which is the much faster firing version. And this time I finally hit my dang shot, so I did more damage, but it's still only around that 400,000 damage mark. So definitely significantly behind the other weapons that we've seen so far. But there's actually one more linear fusion rifle, and that is the Arbalest. Now, importantly, this is not a heavy weapon. This is a special weapon in your kinetic slot, actually. So we tested this for damage, and as you can see, it came in at around 400,000 damage. So that's kind of lining up with the combat sites we just saw. But again, considering it's just a special weapon, this is actually a pretty decent damage output. So, with all of that in mind, what are the takeaways from these tests? Well, the linear fusions you definitely want going into Season 14 are, firstly, the Threaded Needle. 
This is definitely the best legendary linear in the game right now, especially when you get like a god roll such as Vorpal plus rapid hit or auto loading or uh, even clown cartridge. All of that would be great. It's also very farmable. If you don't have that or can't get that for whatever reason, the Corsair's Wrath with high impact reserves is a pretty decent replacement for that. Then in terms of exotics, absolutely the sleeper simulant i think is the highest reward one that is probably going to if linears become meta become meta as well just because the amount of damage per shot is so important it means that you can you know in a grandmaster one shot yellow bars or take down champions extremely fast or just be able to put out a large amount of burst damage by just getting a few shots off before going back into cover and then aside from that you really also want to look at the arbalest just because it is a special weapon and it allows you to do what I've been doing in the background gameplay of this video, which is use the Arbalest and then use, you know, a threaded needle. Use a legendary linear heavy fusion rifle and then you can use double linear fusion rifle finder, double linear fusion rifle scavenger and just be getting a ton of linear fusion ammo for your special and your heavy. And that allows you to engage pretty much every enemy you face with one of your two linear fusions. It's again the benefit that you have when you're running something like the Salvation Salvo plus the Anarchy. You just always have ammo for those things. And so guys, that's it for the video. I hope you enjoyed and found this informative. If you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys want to see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis. That's linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video and as always, have a good day.